For many people, many of whom were forced to take the COVID vaccine, the shot has been physically dangerous. It has caused heart inflammation in many thousands of people, killed thousands of people around the world. In fact, the vaccine does not appear to do much about this version of COVID either. People who've taken the vaccine now constitute a majority of COVID deaths. In the face of these numbers, this is not speculation, it's not a conspiracy theory. These are numbers from the United States, from Israel, from the UK, from governments that keep track of it. Tony Fauci was asked about it. He denied that the vaccines are dangerous in any way, which is a lie. Watch this. So let's just talk very briefly about what we know about the vaccines, because we want to make our decisions really based on facts, evidence and data. Are the vaccines safe? That keeps coming up. Clearly, an extensive body of information clearly indicates that they're safe. That's not true. Pfizer's own clinical trials show that they're not safe. More people have been injured by this vaccine, the mandatory vaccine, than by all vaccines administered in the United States over the past 30 years combined. So you never hear that, and you never hear from people who were injured. Danielle Roskowski says she was. She said she suffered very serious reactions to the Pfizer vaccine, including blindness in one eye, nerve damage, organ damage, and more. She joins us now. Danielle, thank you so much for coming on. Um, what happened to you after you took the shot, why did you take the shot? Were you pushed into taking it? Did you take it voluntarily? And how did your doctors respond? Hi, Tucker. Thank you so much for having me on. And I really hope that my story can help um, impact others. And to answer your questions, I, um, I was not forced to take the Pfizer vaccine. I elected to take the, the vaccine because I thought that it was safe and effective, and I believed our nation's leaders when they told us that, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. as you know, safe and effective is not for everyone. So yes. um, since taking the Pfizer vaccine, I had over 200 tubes of blood drawn, 150 different medical appointments, everything from a sural nerve and calf biopsy to angiograms of my eyes, which proved that I had actually had blood clots in my eyes, which caused permanent vision loss. So I don't have blindness. It's very blurry, but I can still see out of my eye. Um, additionally, my husband and I were actually told by NYU Fertility that this has impacted our fertility and that we um, would probably have to freeze our embryos due to potential pregnancy complications down the line. It's just so heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to hear this and, and to see that you are not allowed to say that on any other channel that I'm aware of in this country. There's a black guy on this. Your story is not welcome in public, period, which I find very upsetting. How have doctors yeah. been with you? How many doctors have been willing to concede this could be from the vaccine? Uh, so doctors, it has been a really long path in finding adequate medical care. Um, so when this first happened, doctors didn't really know what was going on. And a lot of them, you know, did not say that it was the vaccine. However, the current critical care team that I do have in place does believe that it was all caused from the vaccine, especially as more information is coming out about the repercussions of, of the vaccines and, you know, the nine pages of side effects that, you know, the Pfizer documents have kind of revealed. It, it's kind of a consensus now that this did happen from the vaccine. And I'm really fortunate and blessed because I was able to find uh, a doctor. His name is Dr. Jordan Vaughn, who works specifically with the vaccine injured community. So he was able to kind of figure out a little bit more about what was going on with me. You have such a gentle attitude and your, your kindness resonates. I don't know if I would feel that way if I were you. <laughs> those documents you refer to, the side effects from that Pfizer conceded at the very beginning, those have been available since the vaccine rolled out almost two years ago. Or why didn't you know about them? Did you know about those side effects, potential side effects when you took this shot? No, no, I didn't know about the side effects. So when I was, you know, waiting to take the shot, I was pretty much probably like most Americans. I, I don't believe that I had informed consent because I didn't know. I took the shot February, so it was quite early on because I'm a, I, I work with students. So. Um, and having a background in teaching, I wanted to get the shot as soon as I possibly could. Yeah. Um, but and, yeah, and, uh, and thank you for telling me that I had that sort of gentle and kind, you know, um, attitude about me. It wasn't always the case. I was really angry after all of these yes. side effects started happening to me. Yeah. But I, I well, wanted I'm... to take that sort of anger and channel it. Yeah. Well, bless you for sorry, doing that. And I and I'm no, I'm I'm so you're the injured party, not me. So I'm sorry to throw my anger on you. It's just that. 
The fact that you can't say this in public in most places is so distressing. And uh, I know it takes bravery to admit you've been injured uh, by doing something they told you to do. But I know that takes bravery, so I appreciate you're doing it tonight. Danielle, Godspeed. Thank you. And and so, uh, thank you so much, Tucker. If I can just say that there are a couple of really great resources out there for the vaccine injured that I wish yes. I knew about sooner. So the Frontline Critical COVID Care Alliance that's run by Dr. Pierre Corey, and he works with the vaccine injured as well. Um, additionally, react19.org and realnotrare.org uh, Real are really wonderful websites for the vaccine injured community. So they can be game changers. Thank you for telling us that. Sei sotto un cielo sbagliato